Delighted to be joined by Gordon Arthur. Um, my first half commentary, buddy. How did you find it on uh, commentary, Gordon? Well, that's the first time I've done that sort of thing, but I quite enjoyed it. It was good, good, good. Um, we're obviously uh, at the tail end of yet another match against Inverness and yet another match that we don't take the three points. How did you view the 90 minutes? Well, I thought the first half, I thought Rovers played really well and they were fair fair due their, their, their one nil lead. If, if not, it could have been a couple at uh, half-time. And I said to you, before we went in at half-time, they are, they're go- Inverness are going to get a kick up the backside. And that's what they come out the first five, ten minutes and they got their goal. The Rovers come back into it, got their goal. And then in- a soft goal to lose. And then uh, the game kind of just petered out at the end. So, obviously, on balance, the Inverness will be the, more, the happier team of the two today. Back at Starts Park, the place has changed enormously in terms of just its physicality with the two big stands, the playing surface, the, the lighting, but also the modern games change. You were telling me in commentary that it's a, a very different game to watch. It is, it's a different game. I mean, what you, you're looking at there, there's, there was more sort of passing play, things like that, where when we played, it was more you got the ball up the park a wee bit quicker um, than what it is nowadays. But I'd say... Each each era was a that was what it was at that sort of time. If you know, I was playing it was thirty years ago uh, now, so it's a it's a different game altogether um, in that respect. But the, the bottom line is, it's still goals that count. And if you put the ball in the back, it doesn't matter how you get there. That's what wins that's games. What it's all about. In terms of your own uh, records at Wraith Rovers, two hundred and twenty games, seventy two clean sheets, so one and three. Yeah. Fifty uh, ninth in the all time appearance list across uh, the club history. Yeah. And fifth. Uh, in terms of Wraith Rovers goalkeepers yeah pretty impressive stats well I, th- I was very fortunate I come here uh, at a good time um, I signed in 1988 although the story behind it is I was tra- I was training here for a couple of years when I was with Dumbarton and Frank was the manager so it was always on the cards that I was going to sign here at, at some st- at some stage um, but I really enjoyed my five and a half years at the Rovers and um, when, you, when these stats get uh, sort of thrown at you, you say, well, it must have been not too bad. <laughs> Two enormous names in terms of your managers, uh, Frank Connor and Jimmy Nicholl. Tell us yeah. about these characters. They were different. They were different. Frank was the, Frank was the old school, been around the block, uh, very much uh, told you as it was, but he was a great character and... Uh, a lot of enormous respect for, for for Frank. Jimmy was different. Jimmy had come. That was this was his first post, and Jimmy come into it maybe a wee bit naive at the start in terms of coming for full time into part time football, but uh, he got to grips with it, and then the Rovers went full time at that that time. It suited Jimmy, and the rest is history. Um, and it's uh, it was one of the most successful periods in the Rovers history, and I was glad that I, was, I mean at least. I've maybe played some sort of part in it, maybe a small part, but I was happy enough to play that. Do, do that. Do you remember your first appearance? My first appearance, I think it was a, it was here. I think it was against the Rangers. Friendly uh, against Rangers. Friendly, that's right. friendly Nine against and a half Rangers. thousand at the game. It was a big crowd. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it was a pre-season friendly match. Yep. Can't um, remember the score though, but <laughs> we lost. We lost two one. Right. I can fill some of those gaps in for you. Uh, first competitive start uh, in the second division against uh, St Johnston. Um, what are, the, what are the games that stand out for you? What are the moments and what are the arenas? I mean, I'm wondering about things like the replay at Ibrox uh, after the 1-1 game here. I think, uh, without being specific about things, I think at that time you, you did enjoy going to the bigger grounds, like, say, uh, Ibrox, Parkhead, I was at Aberdeen. I always liked going to Aberdeen. I never played for the Rovers there, but I liked going to Aberdeen and playing there. But, you know... Um, the atmosphere in these games was good and playing in front of bigger crowds also. And one of the games, the two or three games that we played here at Starts Park, we had big crowds. There's a great atmosphere out here. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a funny sort of ground in terms of now when you've just got the two, two stands at either end. You've kind of lost a wee bit in the middle. But uh, it, it created its own special sort of atmosphere. Thinking of some of the games that stood out for myself looking back in your career, um, Billy Dodds here with, with um, Inverness duties today but I'm thinking a 2-0 win at, at Dens yes and, uh, and two penalty saves from two, a Mr two, B Dodds yes that's correct uh, a couple of penalty saves I can't remember too much about it but uh, it's down in the, the annals of the hist- historians <laughs> I mean season uh, 91-92 50 game 
run rate, yeah. uh, performances. That's yeah. Uh, yeah. That wants to put you through it. Yeah. Well, uh, I had a, over over my career. I was very fortunate uh, right through my career. Uh, I had long runs where I didn't I didn't pick up an injury or anything like that. And I did have a couple of uh, long spells of playing in, in teams and uh, two or three seasons where I was ever present for not just the Rovers but at Dumbarton and at Stubborn Albion as well and even fourth when I played there so I think that was just the fact that I, I, although I, I kept injury free I wouldn't say I kept out of the kept away from things but, uh, uh, but I was uh, I was quite fortunate in that respect. What about the characters who played in front of me? Um, traditionally, it was a kind of back four that we were relied on at yeah. that time. Who were the who were the, the the players that you you shouted at the most? Who were the ones well, that uh, uh, that were on the line? When I come to the Rovers, I think one of the things the it was the back the back four there we were um, quite solid, quite ex experienced, and the one that stands out more than anything else. And I think he was a great player. Was Cammy Fraser? You knew what he was doing. You, you had, you could rely on Cammy to play games, um, and he, 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 he was one of the standout defenders. Another one that, that stood out was when he come in just at the time when I was coming. It was Big Sean, Sean Dennis come in. Sean was a, a no nonsense centre back, and Sean was always, uh, you always knew that Sean was capable of uh, uh, doing a lot, a lot better, you know. And I think that proved it because Sean had a good career as well. When I was looking across some of the team lines from from back from eighty eight through to ninety three, and the names that that that, that spring up, yeah. you know, McStay, Coyle, you mentioned Fraser, McGeehy, Sean Dennis, Ian McLeod, um, Bobby Rayside, Alec Brash. There's so many there. Yeah. I mean, Bob, even I mean, David you go, Sinclair. You go, you go through Bobby Glennie, Ian McLeod. Absolutely. You know, players like so that. The the the. I mean, we I think that was one of the things that Frank Connor done. Frank. Uh, seen it in the place and you knew that if you got good experienced part-time players into the club then they didn't really need coach they just need to be it was motivation more than anything Frank was number one for that and it was motivation and got these guys playing and that's and it was a club Wraith as a club at that time needed to be dragged up and Frank done that and he, the foundations were all laid for going on with Jimmy Nicholl to take them to the glories, if you yeah. like. He's up with Davy Sinclair today. Yes. I um, did. did he uh, dig you in the ribs as much as you did when I had a go a goalkeeper in the first <laughs> half at, the, at that equaliser grin? Uh, Davy's always good for a wee, for a wee bit of ribbing, but uh, um, it's like everything else we were saying there. They say when you see some of the, the players nowadays, David Sinclair wouldn't have lasted 90 minutes very often. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things you were telling me um, when we were chatting just kind of pre-game was um, you come back once or twice a season and, and always have since you played here. Um, you know, I was quite enamoured with the notion that you said it's not just the place, it's not just the badge, it's not just the club, it's the people. What's it like coming back to Starch Park? Well, I'm a, as, a, as, a, as a Pfeiffer, uh, born Pfeiffer, uh, coming back to Starch Park is always good um, because it's a friend... It, uh, uh, not just the playing side, but the people that are going round about starts part the likes of John Greers, and it was Ali Gourley's that were that beforehand. Um, was is the people you come and meet them, and they're always friendly, they're always welcoming, and things like that. So, so that is one of the main things that stands out. Very very friendly club, and uh, it's a uh, I I create think it's a bit a bit of an honour to actually be. To be able to come back to to Starts Park and I'm always treated well when I come here, so yeah. Well, haste you back and let's get you back in the commentary oh, again. You never know. Maybe you it's never that know. next Denver Nays game. Sometime, but uh, that was great. I, I really, really enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. I really enjoyed it. Was just a pity the result at the end of the day didn't didn't turn out, but it was Inverness. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Bobby. Thank you.